Hi, it's Richard here from the Siebel Hub with part one of our Tethron walkthrough. In this short video, I'll be showing you some of the setup steps we took to enable our Tethron development environment. In the Siebel Web Services Administration, we needed to make sure that a number of as delivered web services were active and the underlying objects such as business services and integration objects were active in the current Siebel repository. Because we're using the out-of-the-box demonstration environment, this was mostly for objects like account, service request, opportunity, and so forth. We also had to create a couple of business services and their corresponding methods and method arguments. All of these steps were clearly documented in the Tethron developer website. Once we had completed these steps, we bounced our Siebel server and logged into the Tethron administration interface to create a new backend system using the provided Siebel adapter. As you can see, the parameters required are quite familiar, such as the enterprise server name, the object manager name, and so forth. Tethron uses a very familiar vocabulary to describe the object model that we will import from Siebel. We create what is known as a canonical data model, which in our case will be importing the objects from the web services we enabled earlier, such as account, service request, opportunity, and so forth. Once we have a canonical data model inside the Tethron administration interface, we can begin to define how users will consume this. We will create a data subscription based on, for example, our account object, since it is at the top of a hierarchy. And we will define the hierarchy of business objects and business components. As you would expect, once we have defined the hierarchy that users will subscribe to, we will also then create what are known as subscription views to detail how the data will be filtered when the user is using their device. A subscription view in the Siebel adapter scenario we can liken to view modes such as My, My Teams and so forth. Optionally we can extend the filtering to include more ad hoc queries. although we won't do any more than a typical my in our scenario. Finally, in the Tethron administration interface, we will make sure that at least one group of users and one application are actually going to consume our new subscription hierarchy. In our case, it will be the sales rep and our sales app. Finally, we will go to our demo user, sales rep1, and ensure that inside the parameters for sales rep1, in the user details, we have created the backend username for Siebel.